Back when I started playing and we began investing in combat within the org, the gallant laser rifle was my go-to as a primary weapon. This is one of four assault rifles in the game at this time, and assault rifles make a great primary weapon, especially when coupled with something more specialised, usually like a sniper rifle or railgun. An assault rifle will cover you in most situations, leaving that second slot empty for a special weapon. The alternatives like submachine guns and light machine guns both have their own drawbacks. Submachine guns are limited in what object can be attached far more so than assault rifles, and machine guns while offering larger magazines and greater damage per second are heavier and slow you down. The assault rifle is a good balance between speed and damage, while also being flexible with the attachments you can add. The Gallant was a good all-rounder back when I started, that at the time featured a 60 round magazine and both automatic and burst fire modes. With an automatic fire mode that had a slower rate of fire than you usually see, this allowed the user to squeeze off single shots if needed, and a burst fire that in truth I never really had use for, but nonetheless it was a feature of the weapon. Being a laser weapon it had no damage fall off and this made it very very good at engaging targets over long ranges but it also had its fair share of drawbacks as well, such as the inability to shoot through shields. And in situations like Jump Town, where ships can be landed quite close to the outpost, the ability to shoot through shields can be the difference between life and death in a close engagement. And with lasers especially, you become very visible while firing, but for a time, the Gallant had a pretty good niche among assault rifles for its capabilities at longer ranges. Then CIG made some changes. Gone was the 60 round magazine, now replaced with a 45 round magazine, and the automatic fire mode that gave the weapon such versatility was replaced with another burst fire mode. The weapon now had a 3 round burst and an almost inexplicable 5 round burst. I am not very fond of burst fire weapons in general so my views on this video will be a little biased, but because of this change I immediately set out to find a new primary weapon. And in this video we're going to take a look at the Assault Rifles of Star Citizen. We're not going to cover much in PvE though, because truthfully, any weapon is fine for PvE. But for PvP, well the nuanced differences between the weapons does impart specific advantages and drawbacks. This video is largely based on opinion and data gathered from the Star Citizen FPS datasheet we'll talk about at the end of the video. But I want to make it clear that the conclusions I reach are based on my own experiences, your mileage may vary. The weapon I turn to next, and the weapon you will find out there in Stanton more than any other really, is the Boeing P4. Most criminal groups and security forces make use of this assault rifle, and for good reason. It is by far the most versatile of assault rifles. Compact, light and easy to use, it can accommodate a wide range of optic, barrel and underbarrel attachments, and features a full complement of fire modes, semi-automatic, 3 round burst and fully automatic. It fires 5.56 ammunition, which in the universe of Star Citizen right now, does practical levels of damage, with its default value of 6.76 at close range. But after 40 meters, suffers a relatively punishing drop in damage, and by 95 meters the weapon is already delivering its minimum damage of 1.5. The damage level has dropped to the point that as many as 12 shots are required to kill a medium armoured target. This is common to all non-laser weapons though, and when you adjust for that fact, the P4 does well as a primary weapon. Semi-automatic fire for this weapon is very accurate, especially so if you have a compensator fitted, so getting shots on target at long range is comfortable, and when you find yourself in a close quarters situation, the fully automatic mode is perfect for quickly getting damage on target. The fact it can be applied well to a wide range of combat situations means you don't necessarily need to switch weapons when changing from fighting indoors to outdoors or from short range to long range. Changing optic on the fly will be sufficient. 
it doesn't truly excel or outmatch more specialized alternatives in any of these domains, but does a pretty good job over all of them. The fact that it is so common also means ammo can be scavenged regularly, not to mention that as a ballistic weapon, it can shoot through shields, albeit with some of its energy lost to the shield. As I said, this can be important in events like Jump Town, where you may end up in a close quarters firefight around ships that are loading drugs at the entrance of the outpost. The P4's DPS is outmatched by several other weapons though, and so in a one-on-one -on -one exchange of fire in an airlock, you may end up simply being outpaced in delivering damage by your opponent. The 30 round magazine empties quickly in these kinds of fights, and being caught during a reload is something to be mindful of. Make no mistake though, the P4 is perfectly lethal, and given its versatility of application over many different combat scenarios, widespread use throughout Stanton, and ease of use to the user, it makes probably the best primary weapon in Star Citizen. The other ballistic assault rifle on offer is the Gemini S71, a favourite among many for its design and its steady semi-automatic fire. It has no other options for fire modes, but it does deliver about 20% more damage per shot than the P4 at 8.19 within its optimal range of 50 meters. The additional damage should make this an excellent marksman rifle, but alas the F-71 also suffers a punishing damage fall off, and by 120 meters is too delivering the same minimum damage of 1.5 as the P4. This means that the S-71 outmatches the P4 in semi-automatic performance inside of 120 meters, but as it does not feature a fully automatic mode, it is less suited to close quarters fighting than the P4, and outside of 120 meters, the weapons perform the same. I personally do not think the S-71's additional damage within 100 meters outweighs the utility of a fully automatic fire mode, especially when you consider that the burst fire of the P4 can remain competitive with the S-71 in terms of DPS even within its optimal range. Where the S-71 should excel at longer range shots, the weapons perform pretty much identically, and the P4 has a semi-automatic mode while also retaining the flexibility of a fully automatic mode. I have made my thoughts on Star Citizen's damage fall off known in the wishlist video I made not so long ago, and I hope that one day we will see a reduction in the damage fall off for the weapons in the game. The S71 is really a joy to fire, very steady and accurate, but at the moment, in my opinion, the P4 is just the better choice. Then we come to the second energy based assault rifle, though not a laser, but a plasma rifle. The Kastak Arms Kana had my interest for some time. I was finding very often during our PvP events that while trading fire at mid or close range, I was very often being taken down by a Kana, and so I decided to bite the bullet and give it a go. My experiences with the Kana are kind of illustrative of why you should never just go on how a weapon performs in a bunker mission or other PvE combat situation. You've got to live with it for a bit and run it against other players. When you pick up a Kana, it is a very imposing weapon and really feels like a step up from the P4, delivering damage extremely well with the highest default damage just marginally at 8.22 and featuring a very aggressive fully automatic mode, a burst mode and a weird semi-automatic slash charge shot mode. At close range in a bunker or when practicing one-on-one -on -one PvP, this weapon is just awesome. I was convinced it was a straight upgrade from the P4, but the weapon does have some problems, and I noticed this first when raiding a rooftop on Arcorp. The automatic fire kicks and bounces quite vigorously during use. This is not an issue at close range, but over appreciable distances, it makes landing those shots much more of a challenge than with the P4. The burst mode is better, with enormously reduced recoil, but still kind of tricky to land consistent shots at longer ranges. And the semi-automatic mode works quite well, albeit with a relatively low rate of fire. But the problem here is even if you land those shots, the Kana has really poor damage properties at range. Three, 
carry. There's a hit. There's a hit. Good hit. Good hit. Down to 77%. 75. Uh, 70. You are hitting me, though. You are hitting me, though. Yeah, but he has no armor. We're doing, like, nothing. Right. Okay, there you go. So, basically, I'm going to stop right here. Uh, I'm at 24% right now. Uh, and, finally, I'm going to uh, backspace to the carry. At 30 meters, the damage falloff begins. And by just 40 meters, its damage is only slightly better than that of the P4. This relationship continues out to 80 meters, with the Kana delivering a very very narrow amount of additional damage. By 80 meters though, the P4 outperforms the Kana in damage. And remember, the P4 is much easier to actually land shots with. At 95 meters, the Kana is, like the P4, delivering its minimum damage. But the Kana's minimum damage is a lower value of 1.3. This makes the Kana a very poor choice for anything but close quarters fighting. It excels at close quarters fighting with its high damage and high rate of fire. But even at mid ranges, you are better off with a P4. But wait, you say, the Karna's semi-automatic mode is a charge shot. Doesn't this give the long-range capability that we're looking for? Well, on paper, this charge shot is very damaging, delivering a default damage of 21.2 and extends out as far as 220 meters before hitting its minimum damage of 1.3. Charging the weapon is loud and at night, very visible. We initially thought that the erratic shake the weapon exhibits when charging would prevent landing shots at range. But after testing we found this was not really the case and we could land shots quite reliably. Still, even against a naked target, the actual practical damage was underwhelming. Okay, that dropped me, it's still going, it dropped me from 94 to 31%. It did hit. So as I said, the Kana is very good for close range, but that is about it. So that brings us back to the Klaus and Werner Gallen, the burst fire only laser rifle. This weapon delivers 6.24 damage per shot at any range, which is a little less than the P4, but as you can tell immediately, this is the best choice on paper for long range engagements as far as assault rifles go. And this was intriguing to me because we run a lot of events featuring longer range combat, and even in the game itself, the addition of more outdoor combat locations like Siege of Orison and the outposts on Microtech, at the very least, hint that we may be seeing more long range combat coming in future. So I decided to just use the Gallon exclusively for a week to see if the burst fire modes were much of a problem, how much it bothered me and how effective the weapon was. I used it during the Siege of Orison, I used it during our Org Battle on Microtech, I used it during Whetstone training, I've even used it during every PvE mission that I've carried out. And here is what I found. The burst fire modes are annoying but do not stop the Gallant having a tangible place in the assault rifle family. The bursts can make close quarters fighting a little awkward because during the downtime between bursts you are vulnerable and if you're used to full auto or semi auto like I am, you will make mistakes with your shot timings that give your opponent the those openings. Ammo usage is also very inefficient because you must fire three or five rounds per trigger pull and at long range only one of those shots might land. The shots are going to do full damage though and that's great but I do lament the loss of the automatic fire mode. Hell I would even take a semi-automatic mode over the five round burst. The five round burst seems to be a reliable incapacitation on another player during our whetstone CQB training, but it feels like such a niche use case of the commitment of a lot of ammo per shot. Maybe it's just my dislike of burst fire in general, because I do believe the Gallant is the best assault rifle choice for long range, but I don't know if I can bring myself to commit to it. So in conclusion, when you are choosing an assault rifle, the P4 is your best all round choice. The Kana is best for close range engagements and the Gallant for long range engagements and the S71 if you want powerful semi-automatic shots up to about 100 meters. I love the S71, but it is kind of hard to recommend it based on the stats that I studied during the making of this video, all of which came from the Star Citizen FPS Data Project by DeBalta. This is a really awesome data tool for weapon stats. I will link in the description and it is free to use and look at, but if you donate two euros to the project, you can unlock all sorts of extra features that allow you to instantly look at properties of weapons and damage at varying ranges and conditions. 
I donated to gain access to these features and not only were they very helpful in the making of this video, but these are the kind of features that will also be extremely useful for looking up weapon stats on the fly in general. I highly recommend supporting that project guys and a big thank you to Debolta for the work done in building such a comprehensive data set. As always, I want to thank all of you at home for watching and send out a huge thank you to all of our amazing patrons who you can see on screen right now. Patron support is what allows me the time it takes to edit these videos. You guys make this possible and I am enormously grateful to all of you for the help that you give me. If you are thinking of starting Star Citizen yourself, you can use the referral code in the description below to gain an extra 5,000 credits on your account when you sign up and we'll be back with more from Star Citizen very soon.